Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. The poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kin folks said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Congratulations, Lieutenant. You've apprehended the most vicious criminal since Jesse James. And you're going to receive a handsome reward from my bank. Oh, just doing my job, Mr. Drysdale. I don't want any reward. No, 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 no. I insist. Miss Hathaway, see that this fine detective receives one of our new calendars. Uh. <laughs> All right, Foxy. Fox Hall, sir. Colonel Gaylord Mayweather Fox Hall. Ah, Colonel Baloney. You're a thief and an extortionist. Hanging's too good for you. Now, take it easy, Mr. Drysdale. He tried to blackmail Mr. Clampett for a million dollars. I know the charge. And the moment Mr. Clampett identifies him, he'll be arraigned. I'll identify him. He's a crook and a murderer. Murderer? That million dollars would have come from my bank. <laughs> and believe me, that would have killed him. Stand aside, you miserable money merchant. You touch me with that, and you'll receive the thrashing of your life. Now, look, that did it. Rush him, Miss Hathaway. Show <laughs> yourself. Would you please drive him around the block till he cools off? Of course, Lieutenant. Well, keep your eyes open for the Colonel's accomplice. We think she may still be hiding in the neighborhood. Oh, yes. That's the young lady who claimed to be Emmeline Fetty from back in the hills. Actually, her name is Rita Rio, alias Country Kate. And she's one of the cleverest girls in the whole extortion racket. She's a shameless Jezebel. She deliberately tricked Mr. Clampett into a compromising situation and took pictures with which to blackmail at Mr. Drysdale. We know what she did. Now, the moment she's apprehended, she'll go to jail. If the Clampets find her first, she'll never make it to jail. What do you mean? Did you ever hear of mountain justice? An eye for an eye. They're probably out right now tracking down that girl with their trusty bloodhound. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale's dog can sit up and speak. You can't even fetch a stick. <laughs> now watch. <laughs> Get it, boy. Get it, go! Now watch! Jack, Do? Come over here. I want to talk to you. Well, listen, Duke. When I said that Mr. Drysdale's dog could speak, uh, I didn't mean words. I meant uh, woofs and barks and ar bark, bark! bark. Like that. You know? Emmeline, shh, help me over. Well, where you been? I've been hiding. Well, who from? The police. And what for? They think I was trying to trick y'all out of money. You? A dumb old country girl trick us? <laughs> That's a laugh. Yeah, ain't it, though? Well, everybody knows the fetish was the dumbest, tackiest, homeliest bunch in the hills. <laughs> I know it. Oh, come on now. Don't go to balling. So for somebody to come from a box of calls, you ain't such a mess. <laughs> Thank you, Chip. As for being dumb, you got to remember, next to me, pretty near anybody looked dumb. That's true. <laughs> hey, did I tell you that I graduated sixth grade? Yeah. I still don't believe it, though. Hey, it's true. Well, I'm deciding on a career. I mean, you know, what I'm going to make my life's work. What's it going to be? Well... I'm kind of torn betwixt an atomic scientist and a fry cook. <laughs> Gee, I, I wish I was as smart as you. Because then I could figure out how to get away from the police. Well, I'll think of something for you. Oh, would you, Jethro? Why, sure. <laughs> It'd be a shame to let an education like mine go to waste. <laughs> Besides, I kind of like you. <laughs> You're just teasing me. Oh, no, I ain't. Well, why, one time I was thinking of... Jethro. Remember, you were going to help me figure out how to get away from the police? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll sit right down here and get my brain to clicking. 
I think better set me. Now, let's see. I sure do appreciate this. <laughs> Jethro. <laughs> Jethro. No, no, no. Did, did I think of something? Oh, yeah. And you talked in your sleep, too. Uh, uh, well, what did I say? Well, you said, since the police were looking for a dumb old country girl, that I ought to sneak up them back stairs and put on one of them fancy dresses that Ellie gave me. Yeah? <laughs> then you said, you'd learn me how to be a sophisticated city girl. The police would never know it was me. I don't! I should come up with a dandy, didn't you I? I did. And that was just while my brain was a-coasting. Think of what I'd have come up with if I'd have thrown that scamp into high gear. Why, plum scares me to think about it. I'm gonna sneak up the back stairs. Oh, Jethro. Now, this has got to be very secret. Oh, you can count on me. Uh-oh. There is one way it could slip out. How? That dumb old hound dog. I learned him to talk. <laughs> Last time I implore you, do not summon Mr. Clampett to this door and unleash upon my snowy brow the fearful fury of mountain vengeance. Mr. Clampett has to identify you and sign a complaint. Then I warn you, my blood is on your hands and upon your conscience the everlasting... Oh, doggy. I thought I heard speech making out here. Come on in, Colonel Foxhall. You too, young fella. <laughs> that is Fox Hall. Oh, glad to meet you, Mr. Foxhall. You two got names a heap alike, ain't you? <laughs> Mr. Clark, my name is Richards. I'm a bunco specialist. A bunco specialist? Yes, sir. I handle fraud, swindles, blackmails, things like that. Maybe it's none of my business, Colonel, but why would you want to take up with a swindler? <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. Well, look who's here, Colonel Foxhall. Oh. And who's this young fella? Granted, the name is Foxhall. Howdy, Mr. Foxhall. No, no, I'm not Foxhall. He claims he's Richards, but I hear tell of criminals changing their names a lot. Criminals? He admits to being a swindler and a blackmailer. Uh, just a minute. Let me see if I can get this straightened out for you. My name is Frank Richards. Lieutenant Frank Richards. Now he's claiming to be in the Army. Uh, no, no. I'm with the Protective Association. I'm a detective. I'm a plainclothes operative. An investigator. Son, if you just tell the truth to commence with, you wouldn't get mixed up like this. <laughs> Here. Oh, howdy, Colonel Foxhall. Foxhall, Foxhall. Who you calling him that? He won't answer to that name. <laughs> Before things become any more confused, we're here for one purpose, to have you identify a criminal. Now, well, you, how can I do that when you can't make up your own mind who you are? <laughs> is he a criminal? Indeed he is, Jethro. Seize him. No, wait a minute. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Excellent. Now, you hold him while I go summon help. <laughs> Stop him. <laughs> hey, oh, old Jed. Uh, he's got a gun under his coat. What the heck you say? Why, that ornery rascal! Now, look! Young uh, fella, it's bad enough being a swindler, but when you come into my home toting a pistol, you done muddied up my crick. You're going to get a whooping. Take him to the woodshed, Jethro. We ain't got no woods yet. I'll take him to the cellar. <laughs> I got me a little old swindler, that's what. Oh, what you doing with it? Oh, I'm taking him down to the cellar. Miss, can you make him turn loose of me? I sure can. You can neither. I can too. You can. 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 I'll show you. Ow. Oh, now I've got me a little old swindler. You get that back, my swindler. Why don't we go back to the bank? You'll just get yourself worked up again. I want to make sure that crooked colonel gets his just desserts. Then I'd better come with you. What for? You may want to thrash him again. <laughs> You've got a smart mouth. <laughs> oh, howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Come in, come in. Thank you, Mr. Clavett. You missed a big excitement. Oh, really? It doesn't have just a swindler. Oh, yes, I know about that. Where is the scoundrel? Got him tied up down the cellar? Oh, good, good. I was hoping you'd give him a taste of mountain justice. He's a crook, a charlatan, a blackmailer. He may be all that, Mr. Drysdale, but you got to admire his spunk. Spunk? 
Granny done dusted his britches twice, and he still claims to be a detective. De <laughs> detective, you sucker. I think I'll get the truth out of that rascal as soon as I get this thing trimmed out. <laughs> What are you doing in my broom closet? Just waiting for this golden opportunity, my dear. The opportunity of being alone with you. Huh? What you mean? The very moment I first laid eyes upon you, my heart has been your prisoner. It was love at first sight. Now I can only think of Granny. 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 Hold it right there. Did I say something wrong? Yeah. Call me Daisy. I am the fairest flower of the field. How like the petal of a daisy is your soft, delicate hand. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. Do this petal again. She loves me. Stop right there, quick, while you're ahead. Now I must say farewell, dear lady. Where are you going? Because I must flee the hounds of injustice that even now are baying at my heels. But I shall treasure this moment forever of being along with you. And I shall carry throughout eternity the memory of your beauty and the dream of a love that might have been. Farewell. Hold on, Colonel. <laughs> you have done away with the stopper under my nose. Now don't go running off with the jug. <laughs> There's the swindler. Colonel Foxhall? Foxhall, alias Freddy the Fox, alias Lay on the Lip. Never yeah. mind that. Arrest him. Don't lay a hand on my colonel. Your colonel? I done made a prisoner of his heart. <laughs> Ain't I, Gaylord? Indeed you have, Daisy. Have a petal. <laughs> no, you look like Granny's got a fish on her line. Granny, the colonel is going to jail. Oh, no, he ain't. <laughs> look at that rascal. He's going at it like corn on a cow. <laughs> and I ain't gonna let him eat and run. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, this man tried to take you for one million dollars. Give it to him, Jen. Are you gonna allow this show to but five's ridiculous. Gaylord and me is going for a little stroll in the garden. <laughs> You're letting him get away? He'll escape. Oh, he ain't going nowhere. Granny done buttered that old cat's claw. But, Mr. Clampett. Now, look, I know that the Colonel has got its faults, but they say that the love of a good woman can work wonders. Now, you leave this all up to us. Won't you sign a complaint for me? No. You give us a little trouble, but I ain't going to complain. <laughs> Emmeline, it's me, Jethro. Well, howdy, man. Is Emmeline here? <laughs> uh, I'm Emmeline. Oh, dog. I done worked my magic on you, didn't I? Oh, dear. I reckon you're smarter than a circus dog. Oh, well, yeah. If I, if I can learn you to talk as good as me, you'll fool the police for sure. Think you can? Oh, heck yeah. You ain't no dumber than old Duke, and I learned him. What do you want me to do? Well, let's hear you say, the goo in the slough gets mainly in your shoe. The goo in the slough it's mainly in your shoe. Yeah. The goo in the slough gets mainly in your shoe. Oh, this is going to take a lot of work. <laughs> Try it again. The goo in the slough gets mainly in your shoe. <laughs> I think you got it. <laughs> Uh, you might find it hard to fit it into a conversation, especially during a dry spell. I'll watch for my chance. Uh, and now I got to learn you how to walk. Well, I know how to walk. Oh, you know how to walk country. I'm going to learn you how to walk city. <laughs> now, you 
try. <laughs> Done it again, didn't I? Just a regular genius. Yeah, I reckon so. All I gotta do is get to town, find me a job, pick out a new name. A new name? Yeah. Foley's are looking for Emily and Fatty. I gotta change it. Oh, yeah. I got it, Alberta Fatty. No, oh, I think the Fatty has to go too. What I need is a city name. Well, how about Chicago? <laughs> no, I mean a Christian name. What about St. Louis? <laughs> I'll think of a name while I'm looking for a job. Jethro. Oh, no, no, that's my name. <laughs> do you think I could pull a job? I mean, uh, get a job at the bank? I mean, do you think Mr. Drysdale would recognize me? Heck no. Well, I didn't even recognize you. And he ain't half as smart as me. <laughs> I'll even learn you to cipher. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no, that won't work. I done made you too pretty. What do you mean? Why, his wife is jealous as, as a cat with one kitten. Really? Why, if she saw him with you, why, she'd snatch him bald. Hmm. You just dropped me off at the bank. I'll take care of things from there, Jethro. Oh, are you fetching along your cuckoo clock? Oh, well, it needs repairing. Well, you know, don't take it to the camera store again, you dumb old girl. I will. Well, I'll show you a place right near the bank on Beverly Boulevard. Thank you. Say, hey, there's a name I could use. Boulevard? Beverly. Oh. Now all I need is a surname. Galahad! <laughs> Done it again, didn't I? <laughs> Coast clear? Oh, no, I can't see that, Bert. <laughs> there ain't no one around here. Come on, let's go. Excuse me, Chief. This young lady is a special investigator from the district attorney's office. Yes, Mr. Drysdale. We've recovered an important piece of evidence. The camera with which Emmeline Fetty took those incriminating pictures of Mr. Clampett. Excellent, excellent. Uh, see that she gets the calendar I promised that jerky detective. You see, Mr. Drysdale, the camera is concealed within this cuckoo clock and is activated by means of an electronic triggering device. <laughs> Poor, simple, trusting Jed Clampett. He still doesn't know what happened. Precisely why I came to you, Mr. Drysdale. I thought a man of your intelligence and sophistication might be able to help me reconstruct the modus operandi used by this Emmeline Fetty. Oh, I'd be glad to cooperate. Uh, excuse me, uh, that isn't her real name, is it? Uh, no, it's uh, Rita Rio, alias Country Kate. Now, it's too bad I didn't see her first. I would have spotted her as an adventuress immediately. <laughs> really? Oh, yes. Of course, as president of a bank, I have to be able to judge character at a glance. So young to be a bank president. <laughs> young in years, perhaps, but in wisdom and experience. Ah. <laughs> this is the way you may return to your office. <laughs> this is a confidential crime detection matter. Take a coffee break. <laughs> now, where were we? We were going to try and figure out how Mr. Clambert could have allowed himself to be photographed in those incriminating poses. Oh, well, that's not hard. Uh, first of all, you've got to remember that he's a simple man from the hills. Naive and unsuspecting. Just the opposite of you. <sighs> exactly. Uh, she probably put this cuckoo clock on a table or dresser or something. And then concealed this gadget in her hand. I see. And then... She probably threw her arms around him and you mean kissed like him. This? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was probably something like that. I'm so grateful to you, Mr. Drysdale. My pleasure. Let me know how things develop. Oh, we're expecting a development very shortly. <laughs> And we will make sure that you get the picture. 
and they talk about police brutality. <laughs> Yeah, I done decided on my life's calling. Well, good boy. Uh, what's it gonna be? Atomic scientist or fry cook? <laughs> Neither one. I'm gonna open me up a charm school. What? A charm school. Well, Uncle Jed, I took a poor, dumb old country gal and turned her into a regular fatty barra. You did? Yeah. Well, man, you should have seen me. I learned her to dress fancy, talk city, and strut around like a flat-footed goose on a hot rock. Well, I mean, when I got through with her, she was pretty enough to pick and sweet enough to put up in a jar. Well, you'd have never thought that she'd come from back in the... Couldn't give away who she is. Emmeline Fetty? Who told you? Well, give it away, Uncle Jed. Did somebody tell... Duke! What? That's what I get for learning that liver-lived hound dog to talk. <laughs> How are you ranting about? Oh, uh, don't try to cover up for him, Uncle Jed. <laughs> uh, Jethro, my boy, would you be so kind as to drive me to a rendezvous? Yeah, hop on. Where'd you say you're going, Colonel? I'm very sorry, but it's confidential. Yeah, well, if you want to keep it that way, don't say nothing in front of that long-eared blabbermouth. A little more respect for your uncle, my boy. <laughs> Excuse me, Chief. Colonel Fox will insist upon seeing you. Greetings, my dear. Get out of here, you crook. It's bad enough for you to be running loose at the Clampets, but I will not have you in my bank. Now, calm yourself. If sir. you stay around here, you're going to be in real trouble. There was a young lady here from the district attorney's office. And if she comes back and finds you Was here, that the young lady? Yes. And if she... If she... <laughs> I'm going to get right to the point. I'm going to let you have these at a most reasonable price. Oh, no. Not one penny. You're not dealing with Jed Clampett right now. You're dealing with a man of the world. Right to the police. That's where I'm going. Right to your wife. That's where these are going. They want it? Unless I have your certified check for $50,000 within five minutes, my associate will deliver duplicates of these pictures to Mrs. Drysdale. <laughs> no. <laughs> what you crying about, Mr. Drysdale? Oh, Mr. Clement, I'm being victimized by this blackguard. He'll ruin my marriage if I don't pay him $50,000. I can beat that deal for you, Colonel. You mean you're offering more money? No, I'm offering to keep you out of jail. You promise to behave yourself, Mr. Drysdale will let you go. No, no, I'm in no position to bargain. Even now, duplicates of these pictures are being delivered to my wife. You mean these? Where did you get those pictures? Took them off of Emmeline when I seen her sneaking over to the dry ale. Come on in, Emmeline. <laughs> Colonel, I, I think we ought to go along with Mr. Clampett. Behave ourselves. Emmeline and me had a long talk. That done some good. Then Granny took her down to the cellar and got right to the seat of the trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever explained right from wrong to me the way she done. <laughs> now, Colonel, Granny is cooking up a big mess of side meat and black-eyed peas. Now, don't that sound better to you than bread and water? It does, sir. Indeed, it does. <laughs> Come on, Duke. Say something. I mean, you flapped your head off to everybody else, but why can't you say a few words to me? <laughs> Emmeline? Well, what happened to you? You ain't Beverly Galahad no more. You best ask your Uncle Jed. Granny and me had a little talk with her, Jethro. Excuse me now. I have to go help fix the black-eyed peas. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ellie, there goes your education. No use having a school of charm around here. What you talking about? I had that girl looking and talking like a movie star. And five minutes with them two hillbillies, and she's right back where she started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, Duke. Don't clam up on me now. I need somebody to talk to. <laughs> Well, 
Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.